Hi Gordon, thanks for joining me this morning. Very welcome. Um, can you introduce yourself and tell us a about your involvement with the creative arts? Yeah, uh, my name's Gordon Steele. Uh, I am a writer, uh, playwright uh, and director professionally. Uh, I lectured for, for quite a few years at Stockton Riverside, uh, but I've been a full-time writer now for about 20 years, maybe a bit longer. Um, amazing. So um, is this something that you've always done? Has writing always been? No, no what happened, it, it, was, it was very much, I ran a youth theatre years ago and we took a play at the Edinburgh Festival. Uh, we were all excited about it. And the next year we took three plays to the Edinburgh Festival. And then the following year I said, well, I'm not going to the festival unless someone writes a play because I need someone to write a play because it's all about your writing in Edinburgh. We'd sussed it out after two years and nobody would. So I wrote one. So I wrote a play called Dead Fish and we took it to the festival and it won, won a fringe first. And John Gobber came to see it. And, uh, it was a, it's a funny little story because he came to see it and then the next day I got a message at a flat we were staying in to phone this number at four o'clock and uh, it, was a, it was a day before, it was a time before mobile phones. So I got all these 50 pences and 10 pences ready and there was a phone box over the road so I went and rang this number and it was John Gobber's agent and he said, you know, John's raving about this play, he never... Uh, he never raves about anything, and, and I want to be your agent. And he said, "I wish I'd seen it. I was uh, I was in Edinburgh. I've just left it two days ago." I said, "Well, I'm on in Stockton next week." He said, "I'll come." So he came to Stockton, came to what was then the Dovecot, what's now the Ark, uh, uh, or not Ark, not the Ark. Um, uh, and he's been my agent ever since. And then what happened? The whole truck took on that play, Dead Fish, toured it the following year, I directed it. A uh, couple of the cast were in it. I mean, uh, Daniel Casey, who was in it, went on to fame and, is on fame and fortune. He was in uh, Midsummer Murders. He made about 30 films in Midsummer Murders. And uh, he's done EastEnders and Coronation Street and all the usual acting kind of jobs that people do. Uh, so kind of that was the start of it. And I've been writing and directing ever since. Brilliant. Well, there you go. Hit the ground running. Well, it was a kind of, I suppose it was the Edinburgh dream. I got the Edinburgh dream, really, because we opened on the Monday. Uh, and I said to the cast, I said, look, don't worry if there's nobody in, because the average attendance is seven. So we had about 15 the first day. The theatre only held 80. We had, we had 15, uh, 15 the first day, 49 the second day, 70 the third day. And the fourth day, we were full. And we had six press and John Goblin on the Thursday. And the following week, I got the Fringe first and, you know, I kept getting, and, and got nominated for the Independent Theatre Critics Award. And this was a play about a family living on the banks of the Tees. You know, a bit loaded in my past a little bit. Yeah, well, this, this that's great. I think, um, you know, that's in a way kind of what I'm doing with this, trying to capture stories. Um, so is that generally, is that what you write about normally in your plays? Nearly all the plays I've written, apart from one, are set in Middlesbrough. Uh, having, having had the success with Dead Fish, they, asked me to, they then asked me to write another one, and I thought, I've got, I, don't, I don't think I've got anything else to say. I think I've said it all. But when someone gives you a bit of money and says, go away and write it, it's, um, and I think fear doesn't have to motivate you. Uh, the fear of failure doesn't have to get them juices flowing. So I wrote, I wrote a second play, which um, called Like a Virgin, about two girls who lived, uh, well, I said Middlesbrough, but anybody else, it'd be kind of Grange. There was a, there was a road in Grangetown, which was next to ICI, which a lot of people that lived on it all had bronchial problems and, and real kind of cancer problems. So I wrote about two girls from Middlesbrough, uh, called it Like a Virgin. And, and that went on, that's been phenomenally successful for me. I mean, people study it for GCSEs. It's in monologue books, some of the speeches, and people do it, students do it for top drama colleges, rather than central, they do the speeches from it. And some of the students who have tutored are away in drama school, and the phone me up and say, we're studying your play, we're studying your play. But it's just about two girls set in Middlesbrough, you know, but it's, it, it's done really well. Well, I'm really, really pleased to hear that. That's, um, yeah. uh, 
sound like you're, you know, you're getting uh, important stories and uh, out there that are written from people um, that live in Teesside. I think there's um, regions suffered quite a bit by having ideas of uh, what it what it is imposed upon it. Um, yeah. And um, so, yeah, obviously I'm kind of looming uh, here or pretending to outside of some of our sort of industrial heritage. Um, what other important uh, things do you think your plays do? Um, it's like, um, you know, you've obviously got a bit of a name for yourself out in Edinburgh and that's that's uh, fantastic that that play's been taken on. You've written some well, more. What, why do well, you think it's important? I got an, I got an email um, about three weeks ago, four weeks ago, from New Zealand, from this guy who said, we're doing your play. And I just thought you wanted to know that we're actually, even with all these times, we're doing this. It's, uh, and, and I'm originally, he was originally from the Lake District, but we're doing, we're doing this play. And uh, I think they were doing, no, they were doing A Kick in the Baubles, which is a, a play, I, I, again, a Christmas play, which I wrote for Hull. They commissioned me to write it, set in Middlesbrough. And, and he said, just down the road, there's another theatre company doing Like a Virgin. And I just want you to know that two of your players are still being done uh, X thousand miles away. So I think that's nice. That's nice that they're still getting done. And, and last year, I got a call from my agent to say, Kicking the Balls, which I wrote 20 years ago, is being translated into Dutch, Flemish, something. And they're going to do it on Belgium and Holland. So. I, I mean, with COVID, I don't know what's, what's, it's a bit held up at the minute, but you know, that's, that's nice, but all set in Middlesbrough. And uh, I always thought when, when I got asked, when I said I'll write it, I didn't really think this would happen. I didn't have any aspirations. I thought, first and foremost, hey, you're not clever enough. You don't read enough. You don't know enough. Uh, but it just kind of happened. And uh, I've always tried not to be too clever and just write it as I see it. And it just so far, thank goodness, touch wood, uh, it seems to have paid dividends. That really is, that is really brilliant. And uh, what I'm interested in, so you say this, um, this started about 20 years ago. Were you involved in the theatre, in the creative arts before that? Well, I tell you, I, I started, when I left school, um, I remember being at school and the careers teacher said, what do you want to be? You had to write your options, one, two and three. And I wrote, uh, first of all, footballer, because I'm from Middlesbrough. Secondly, actor, and I'd never acted in my life, so I don't know where that come from. And thirdly, spy. <laughs> I think I'd seen a James Bond film. Um, and then one, my brother was involved in a Grinch Down Boys Club with Bert Woolley, um, great Middlesbrough character. And... I went to pick him up one day, I was 17, and he had the car, uh, the, I was there with the car keys at the back of the theatre, and someone had dropped out of this plane and needed someone to go in it. And so I got roped in to being in, uh, uh, what they call it, oh, the Crucible. So I started playing Judge Hathor on the Crucible, and then I decided I hated the bank and I was enjoying this, and Bert, who actually taught at the uh, teacher training college, said, why don't you come and be a teacher? So I packed the bank in, went to be a teacher and taught drama. So I taught drama for a lot of years uh, in Stockton, Middlesbrough, Loftus, you know, various places in Teesside. And then spent most of it at Stockton and Billingham College or Stockton Riverside as it is now, uh, working with young students going off to London. And there's many of them there. There's, we've got them all over the world and all in the West End. Brilliant, terrific. So you kind of um, uh, learnt your own craft as you were teaching it to other people then, in a way? Possibly, yeah. I suppose you could look at it like that. Yeah, I did I did teach it. I still do a bit of private tuition now with students who want to go off to act. You know, I've got real aspirations of following their dreams. Um, so I, I do a little bit of that still. Uh, but I think it's important. I mean, one of the a couple of years ago, I formed a theatre company uh, in Teesside called Steelworks, clever, Steelworks Theatre Company. Um, and we kind of base out of ARC, although we're independent of ARC, ARC gives us a lot of support. Um, and, I, and I wrote a play, uh, Grow Up Grandad, and then I did one, uh, The Full Stool Boys, which was the first play, The Full Stool Boys, which is not set in Teesside. Uh, but I did this play. And at ARC, we have this um, night 
which is called pay, pay, pay as you, pay what, not pay what you want, pay what you decide, I think yeah. you call it. So basically, they watch it and then they come and then there's a group of um, school kids in and the teacher came up to me and said, look, it was a Monday night and I said I'd give a talk after the, to the school kids. And the teacher said, some of these kids have got very little money, you know, they're, they're worried and they're panicking that, that, they, that they can't afford it. And so I'm, I'm sat on the stage, and I'm laid on the stage in the front, and they're all in the front row, a couple of kids, the audience have gone, and I'm talking to them, I say, look, the most important thing is that you're here and you're seeing a bit of live theatre and all this. And this little lass, um, she kind of put a little hand up and said, you know, when, when he got shot there, when he died there, that was like his spirit going up. And this kid was being enthralled with the first bit of live theatre she'd ever seen, and she was 14. And it wasn't a, it wasn't a, I would be careful, I don't swear, it wasn't a pantomime. It was a piece of theatre that had really grabbed her. And it was a simple, we had a similar experience in South Shields, where we did this after show talk to a, um, a group of school kids, and two of the actresses in the play were there with me. And this, this, this little girl, she's 14, 15, was crying her eyes out and saying, oh, it really did this to me and that, and you really know how to write sadness and all this. And this actress, uh, you're a professional actress from Manchester, no, London she is, uh, she said, uh, that'll stay with me for the rest of my life, that kid. Experience that piece of theatre. And I think that's what the culture that we have that everyone has, I suppose, but we always, we're from Middlesbrough, so we're a bit more biased, that we think our, our culture has, you know? Um, and there's things like that that keep you going. Yeah, absolutely. Being able to have that kind of effect on, uh, on a young mark that could, you don't know what effect that's going to have for the rest of their lives, you know, just, just that one initial moment. And even if it does something for a couple of days. <laughs> It doesn't really matter. You know, I don't want to be life changing. I just say, this, no, is, this is something there. And she she was enthralled. And it, it just make it, it might just open something up for her, whether it's in baking or welding or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, we don't want them all to be actors. We don't want them all to be this. We just want them to experience the beauty and the power of the cult and, and, and appreciate the, the culture within their lives, I suppose, that, that very often we overlook. Brilliant. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree well, more. Right. Thank you. I thought I was getting on my soap books a bit then. No, I think that's brilliant. It's like the idea that, you know, any, everything has to be groundbreaking and, and, and world beating and, and life changing, actually. You know, if you can just make somebody think for a couple of days, that, that's, that's a great thing to have done. Yeah, I think so. I think so. For a couple of hours and the teacher and they were all going back to talk about it. And I mean, when I did grow up granddad, um, Angela Rose, who was uh, head of Rye Hills th uh, Performing Arts or Drama or whatever the title was. And she brought a, a group of school kids to see grow up granddad. And um, she said, she, uh, she wrote to me afterwards and she said there was a, a kid behind her and she thought, I'm going to kill her when I finished because he, she's carrying on behind me. And then she said she turned around and she wasn't shuffling of it. She was crying. And she'd said to, the, to Angela afterwards, that was my life on there. That was my life on that stage. And she said the kids all started writing about it on the bus back to Rekka, which is, it just did something for them. They just connected with it. It was about them. And they could relate to it and they could see things that that maybe it just was a mirror for them. Yeah, and the um and the kind of self-worth that it um can give to people when they see them themselves in their own lives represented in something like a play or a, or a, or a film, it's like you or know painting or what going on whatever. in my world is interesting enough and important enough for, for plays to be made about it. Yeah, I think so. Because, I, I mean, I think we all suffer a little bit from an inferiority complex where we are, you know, we always think, you know, we're not the Covent, we're not Covent Garden, we're not the Royal Opera House, but by hell, we've got some culture and we've got some brains and we've got some creativity and we've got some passion. <laughs> we've got it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this is why, you know, this is my experience of it. 
Um, I've been involved in all kinds of scenes all around the country, but um, I don't think there's ever been anything quite like Teesside. Um, it's just, uh, as you say, it's got so many different elements to it and it's uh, really layered and complicated. And, you know, as, as for me as a bit of an outsider, there's all kinds of groundwork to do to, um, you know, and, and this listening project has been a huge part of that. And um, Good. Yeah, um, but I remember when my son was little and I, I took him out to school to go to the cup final. Because <laughs> Mills were in the cup final. And the teacher was, well, I think that's just great. And I said, do you not realise the experience and the culture that this seven-year-old boy is going to experience when he's down there? Do you not realise the theatre he's going to see and the life he's going to experience? Yeah. You know, um, I remember going with the head... He got told off because um, the head teacher, he, he'd been singing or doing something and what have you, and the teacher told... His class teacher had told him off and told him that the World Cup was not to be mentioned... And I remember going into the head teacher and said, really? Not to be mentioned. So we're not doing countries of the world. We're not doing cultures. We're not doing flags. We're not doing, we're not doing the food. We're not getting the, the young uh, children to write about the game that they've seen. We're not using the English and we're not using the geography and we're not using the maths to work out how many goals they need to do. We're not doing all that. We're just trying to ignore that, are we? Because it's not right. I, know, I was, I was on my little cultural high horse. I think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I was involved in politics, um, the, the 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 football was going to be an absolute key uh, part of of my plans. And I do think it's um, there's not many places in this country where you'll see um, a, a bunch of mainly men um, cr openly crying, yeah, and then hugging one another, singing. I know. Uh, you know, it really is a, a you know, because I went to matches when I was really young and um, I, you know, I, I, for my sins, I support Sunderland. Oh my, right, should we just finish this? I know, I know. <laughs> I, I was kind of beaten into it by my You've older brother. You've football now though, haven't you? Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. So yeah, it's, mm, mm, and on that. The thing is, whichever team people support, they do feel, and certainly in the North East, we're all passionate about our team, you know. I mean, the lads, it was a couple of the, the actors in the cast, well, one of them was a Newcastle supporter. So when the show finishes, little present, I give him a bit of a football club badge. <laughs> really, no, I feel a lot different about it now that I live up here. Um, I used to be, you know, particularly FTM. Um, uh, uh, but no, I just, I support all the Northeast teams. Yeah, well, football is great. I mean, it's great for bringing people together. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Okay, well, I think we, we'll leave it there with a big up for, for football along with the arts there. Uh, it's <laughs> to talk to you. Really nice to meet you. And um, you. we'll get to raise a glass or something some point next year. Don't know at the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Plague Island, they're calling us at the moment. So I don't know when we'll, <laughs> we're going to be allowed. Which radio station are you on? Are you on a radio station? I am on a radio station. I'm on a radio station called the Neon Hospice. I'll send you the links. Okay. Um, also, this will go up on a YouTube channel and then it all gets edited down into an Arts Council film. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. All right. Thanks ever so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye. Take care.